Hey guys, David here with a new review for the latest episode of The Walking Dead. Of course, I, I haven't been saying this lately, but I think it goes without saying, so I get tired of saying it. But spoilers for the episode will fall on this review. And the episode was called New Best Friends, which is what I, I'm guessing Rick was guessing he found at the end of last week's episode. And that's why he was smiling, because it turns out he was smiling because he saw all these people with all these weapons, and he was just that confident that he was going to win them over. Which I was like, okay kind of iffy i preferred something a little juicier like a familiar face or him going insane or something like that but whatever i'll take it and basically we find this new group who's led by this lady with a terrible haircut named jadis which sounds made up to me but he finds a a, a newfound confidence rick in this group that he can maybe strike a deal to hopefully have them join the fight against the saviors and in order to do that he needs to prove himself he needs to prove to these people that are real which they are an intriguing bunch. At first, it seemed like we were going to do the same tired trope. Even after meeting the leader, Jadis, it looked like we were going to do the same been there, done that that The Walking Dead has a tendency to do, where they were tr starting to be assholes, they were knocking them around, they were about to get into a fisticuffs, and I'm like, I'm tired of seeing this. Another asshole group? I... I I would have preferred something better, like a, a familiar face that Rick recognized and maybe that's what was making him smile because it's such a unique thing for him to do. There was even a point where I thought he was looking at Gabriel and that's why he was smiling because Gabriel managed to bring this group and he was the one leading them or something like that, he was affiliated with them. Turns out he was captured when he was in the pantry. We didn't see that because it was in camera tricks. He was actually being held prisoner and thankfully he gets, he gets rescued in this episode and it's because of him that Rick was smiling because somebody taught him the proverb of enemies because Becoming friends and this whole little adventure within the trash the CG trash heap pile because that shot of Rick up against that humongous load of trash heaps is was a little bad the green screen on that could have been rendered a couple more times but they were an intriguing bunch that at first had me worried but as the episode continued and they showed the way that they were talking about and how the lady was talking about how they were there before the change so I'm assuming these are a band of homeless people that learned to kind of adapt to the world that they were around because they're kind of used to that style of living so it's like to them they're like oh no worries that's why they're just walking around with like these blank faces they're not looking all aggressive I mean they, they could be aggressive if they want to but they're walking around this very <sighs> this very ghostly way that they're just walking around and the way they talk especially Jade is like show Rick up up or away from me now like they don't use direct words they use these really broken English that not to sound discriminative but an awful lot of homeless people have a tendency to use after they've been on the streets for a while so I'm assuming that's the background behind these people and that's what makes them a little intriguing and makes them stand out a little bit more over other angry groups that Rick has come across but of course the most fascinating and awesome part of this whole little adventure that Rick goes through with these people is that little pit that test pit that he's thrown into with that zombie that has the spikes coming out of him that was a boss battle for your ass all right I, I I'm a video game nerd so as soon as that scene popped up, my index fingers and my thumbs were twitching because I'm like, come on, Rick, move your ass, move your ass. And you even got a secondary character, just like in video games. You got one character saying, use the walls, Rick. And, and Rick starts using the walls like a weakness and takes out the, the walker, which was a badass, uh, badass walker. It's one of the very few walkers that's going to be memorable because of all the spikes. It was a very cool design and very cleverly used. And I like that that whole entire set piece was very intriguing. I didn't think that Rick was in humongous is danger but the way it was filmed minus a few shaky cam shots here and there was really expertly done and really gave me a sense that these people meant business and this these people were going to be a unique sort especially since rick manages to pass the test and they do strike that deal i'm intrigued to see how they're going to hold up the fight once they do get the guns of course it's not without its qualms we still had rosita i swear to fucking god rosita becoming the new andrea and she's getting on my goddamn nerves. And every little fucking scene that she's in now, she's always picking a fight with some other character. Doesn't matter who, Sasha, and then this week Tara, and in the next episode it's probably going to be Aaron or Rick or whatever. And I feel like maybe, just maybe, the reason why this is happening is because The Walking Dead is setting, uh, setting us up for her potential death. And maybe if enough feedback from us gets heard by the producers like, yeah, Rosita's a pain in the ass, then maybe they'll kill her off. Or maybe they'll kill off another character because towards the end there, we started to see a few comedic elements with all these characters within this adventure. Is it mainly Rick taking that wire cat with them and laughing it up with Michelle? 
zone, I feel like maybe we're being set up for some potential heartbreak later on. Even though I wouldn't have minded for The Walking Dead to kind of retain that model of centering around just one group of characters within one episode because this was genuinely an intriguing storyline, they're trying to do their best to kind of splice up stories so that we can kind of keep people's attention a little bit longer by bouncing back and forth. And the other story that we we, we went back to was Daryl adjusting to life at the kingdom. And one of the things that he comes across is his little exchange with, I believe his name is Richard, who I think might be the other potential death we'll see by the end of the season because he's just so overly confident and very, very dead set on trying to put a dent into the saviors. So far as to taking Daryl, under uh, under particular circumstances and taking them out there and trying to at least get a couple of saviors killed and it felt a little gimmicky to kind of have him withhold information from Daryl to kind of keep that secret going along and it, it, to the point where even Daryl kind of became self aware of the script that he's like just say her name damn it and it's finally revealed that Carol is somewhere out there in the in the cabin and she was practically bait for Richard's plan which makes him bail. And this whole thing was kind of okay, whatever, didn't really care for it, but what I think was interesting was that it led to Daryl discovering Carol out there in the in the cabin, and of course, their little reunion was very emotional. I, I couldn't help but, but feel kind of something inside, something inside my cold dead heart was beating when that scene came along. And then, something kind of interesting, but going back to the little video game nerd inside of me felt a little skeptical with the decision that the writers made at the end of this episode by having Daryl not tell Carol about Glenn and Abraham, because even like Morgan pointed out in the little scene there in front of Shiva, who was being very cute this week, pur purring, fucking Tiger was purring, but... Daryl decides to withhold that information from Carol and that obviously kept Carol from going to the to, to, to the kingdom and actually raising hell and trying to fight back because even uh, Morgan was pointing out yeah she would have been there and that is a very interesting point that I'm sure is going to be a, a proverbial shoe that's going to drop later on in the season because that's the only way that this all out war is going to be cemented and fully fully happen even with the, these people getting the guns and other communities joining in like the, the, a few residents of the hilltop have done against the, uh, Gregory's wishes. The, the final cherry on top would be Carol to join. And I know that that's going to happen. And I know that maybe that could happen at the expense of some friction happening between Daryl because he lied to her. And the reason why I was mentioning my video game nerd inside me being a little skeptical is because this did feel a little Last of Us to us. I don't want to get too much into it because maybe some of you have not played The Last of Us. But let's just say that they took a page from the, the script, in fact, the very last page of the script for The Last of Us and kind of made it their own here in The Walking Dead. So it was very difficult to not draw those parallels, but I'm still intrigued to see how this show plays that out, especially when, you, when you're when you dealing it with two very beloved characters like Daryl and Carol. So that, along with Negan possibly coming back after being absent for two whole episodes, which is quite surprising, and even Daryl getting a brand new crossbow along with this new community with the new deal, the Walking Dead is not necessarily becoming great, but it's being very, very interesting with the way that they're making the decisions writing-wise, and definitely has me interested in the next episode to come. So I'm going to be giving New Best Friends a very low 8 out of 10. Very likable episode, not one of the best because fucking Rosita, but... I'm still intrigued to see how things progress from this point forward with some of the character drama as well as the inclusion of brand new characters like these people from the from the garbage piles or whatever it is that the place was called. And it's pretty funny because now in 2017, this is probably considered fashion. Please let me know in the comments below what you guys thought of this week's episode of The Walking Dead. What do you think is going to happen later on as we build up the end game leading up to the all-out war against Negan and his saviors? And do you think that maybe that little plot device, and who knows, it could probably be dropped, but that little plot element of Ezekiel and his crew feeding rotten meat to the pigs and then giving the pigs to the saviors is that gonna be brought up at all that dude was looking a little sickly like he was being tired and he looked a little bit like he was decaying around the eyes the dude that's that was trying to control that one dude who's like i want his gun dude's is like dude i don't have time for this that dude looked like he was starting to rot away a little bit so do you think they're gonna bring that back who knows? Please let me know your feedback in the comments, like and share this video, and please do not forget to follow me on Instagram and on Twitter at DarkSpiderDavid, and of course subscribe for future reviews on The Walking Dead, Ages of S.H.I.E.L.D., and all other things that revolve around my nerdiness. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time guys, take care.